Yeah, like it's in the back. Issue. We'll get her when she comes out. We won't let her pass by. Um, Sunday school. How many's back there? A couple? Okay. All right. Well, moving on to the announcements. I think this afternoon, the kids probably know they're going to have uh, uh, practice this afternoon right after church. Is that right? That's what they're working on, practice. Okay. All right, so Christmas play practice right after church, so you want to be part of that. Please stay. Um, see Teresa um, with the play practice. Um, November, we have the old-fashioned day coming up on the 26th. So we'll have a meal after church on that. Probably won't have services tonight since we're having play practice. So we'll have Thursday night services. Uh, we'll be back Thursday night for services on that. Unless Teresa leaves it. I wait until she gets out. We'll ask her. Okay. She will practice tonight and Thursday night. We'll let her have the service to get her program together. All right. We'll hold up on birthdays and announcements till they come. I guess I don't know where else to go. Um, what else we got? Thank you for that. Yeah, so they'll have a meal for that. All right. Um, the announcements, play practice after church, old-fashioned day. Um, services on Thursday, maybe play practice. We'll see. Play practice right after church today. Oh, anybody else got anything? church been a missionary church we've been working with OCC all summer taking up donations for the Christmas child uh, program through the Graham Smyrna's purse we did uh, take those boxes yesterday and delivered them uh, as she was saying uh, the boxes have went up on shipping to these other countries they are estimating now at ten dollars per box to ship um, the boxes to the the third world countries and where all they go so all over the world so anyone wants to help out that see china um there have been a lot raised still like just a little bit of getting the ship shipping done on that thank everybody for their uh help on that for the missionary work through the church anyone else we get four to come up uh second sunday we'll have the regular so we've got two offerings today Regular and building. Okay. To get two to come or four to come up, we'll take up our regular offering. Remember these prayer requests. Let's come to your feet. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the day. We thank you for our visitors. We thank you for our church. We thank you for the opportunity to be here today, Lord. We just, uh, thank you for all that you do, each breath we take, for the salvation. Thank you for Jesus Christ on that whole rugged cross for us, Lord, that we have a opportunity to serve you. Lord, just help us in this church to do the mission work that you have us to do and live the lives you have us to do throughout the church, throughout our community, throughout the world. Lord, we show your love in each and every day. Lord, be it this offering to take it up to do your will with in the church. Be it each and every one the spoken and unspoken prayer request, Lord. And be it the Christmas play coming up. Be with the practice this afternoon. Be with all the prayers lifted up to you in Jesus' name. Amen.
And kids with the pennies. And turn and shake hands.
little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in, then you'll know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in, then you'll know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I told Kenneth if we had the energy these little girls had, we'd, we could do a whole lot. And he said, we'd break us all to pieces. <laughs> we are. Uh, be a lot different. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Good to have each one. Good to have our visitors with us. Always good to have visitors. And I, uh, we shared yesterday and got to go. And I wanted to share with you something this morning. We did go up to Samaritan's Purse yesterday and uh, to deliver the fruit by our shoe boxes. I'll get right in a minute, shoe boxes. And uh, uh, Michael and, uh, said he had never went with us when we volunteered to go through the boxes. And I told him it might be something you as the church would want to do again. It's been several years since we went up and uh, went through them. Let me explain to you there are certain things that they will not let uh, go in the shoe boxes. We try to pack ours till, uh, till we don't have anything. But a lot of folk don't understand there are certain things that can't fly. And I didn't realize till yesterday that you cannot put toothpaste. Used to, they let us put toothpaste in. But since they had all the deal, 9-11, you cannot put any type of paste in those boxes. And so we couldn't send any toothpaste. We had to make sure it was out. They have volunteer churches and volunteer groups that go through every box before it's shipped to make sure there's nothing illegal going. And uh, uh, if it's camouflage, it can't go because it represents war. And uh, just several little things that you don't think about that can get put in and has to be taken out. And so if you as a church or you as an individual want to volunteer, you can see uh, Shana or myself and we'll uh, set up a time that we can go and go through to help go through. It's been, I, I can't remember how many years it's been. Uh, since we took a van load and went up and worked volunteer, you can volunteer. I, if I've not changed it one hour, two hours, or three hours, and uh, they'll show you and tell you what cannot go and what will. They sort of brief you on what will, and they have a place that they, it's almost like a production assembly line that you go through them, and when you get done, then they're ready to be shipped out. So. If you want to do that, uh, some of you want to go and do it, would like to experience it, why you talk to me or Shana, and we'll put down the names, we'll try to uh, call and try to get us a slot that you can go through it and, and enjoy doing it and be a part of that. And also, as Shana said, she has received uh, part of the money or a lot of the money uh, to ship them out, 
and the cost did go up, but I, uh, everything I went to look at lately, the prices shot up about double, so we can expect that as well. And so if you have, want to contribute to pay shipping on boxes, you may not even want it to uh, uh, be a part of gathering this stuff up and you want to give money on it, please see Shana. She's taking care of this. We will uh, be turning in the money. They, took the, they take the boxes and then we uh, make a do donation uh, to ship those boxes out. So uh, if you have something you want to give, uh, why, please give it to Shana and she'll She'll take care of the money from there to make sure it goes to the Samaritan's Purse. We get more. That just helps toward uh, shipping somebody else's that may not can raise enough money. Uh, so if you have something you want to give, please give it to Shane on that. Now, uh, changing notes for just a moment. Uh, we're trying to plan some of the things for Thanksgiving, and I, I've been... Uh, Hoping maybe I could share with you two or three things toward Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, I noticed, and some of you, if you're on social media, there's a little saying going, a couple of things they wanted to put back this year. The number one thing was to be thankful for what we had. Now, folks, we're blessed. I, I have been... Uh, and, and for my interest from two or three standpoints, I've been watching what's going on in the Middle East, the destruction that's taking place. War is, well, I'll not use the term that's used a lot of time, but war is rough. The Palestinian people are seeing it rough. I know Hamas bombed Israel, stirred up the whole mess, and Iran's involved, I'm sure, in all of that. But we're that close to seeing a world war that take place that will be something like never seen before. So we need to be praying. We need to be thankful we live in America. Don't mean we can't have 9-11 proved to us America's not that safe either. We could have problems here. But pray for those folks that are going through it. He's showing last night uh, on the news a little bit of the damage that is done uh, on the Gaza Strip and all the towns that's there. Folks, it's devastating. We think 9-11 hit us hard. Woke up America to realize that we're not exempt from problems. It could happen again. When they're telling how many folks from other countries that have migrated and came in through the United States that they have no idea where it is. We could be a part of it. It could be a ticking bomb for us as well. But what we can do, now, I don't want you to feel depressed. I want you to know there's something we can do. We can pray. God can change things. Prayer changes things. And I want us to be much in prayer for it and be praying for God's will, America is not exactly by the way America's living is not on real good terms with God. Let me say that. And America needs to repent. Number one, need to repent. But I'm, I'm glad God's always watched over, took care of us and provided for it. And I want to be thankful this year, more thankful than ever before. And we'll have our old fashioned services the time we go back be reminded where god brought us from where we're at now so that'll be on the 26th and you would be planning on that and we'll do that i ask you also to pray for those on the road you know jeannie and lonnie uh, took a few days away to get away Okay, now and Lisa and the girls went, both piano players wound up pitching fours at the same time. I told Ken, I said, Ken, you're going to have piano, you're not going to have piano player this morning. I'd received a text and uh, Gaynell and Lisa and the girls are on the way home. They left about 10, I think, from down there. So you pray for them as they come home. Pray for Lonnie and Jeannie if they can have a safe trip home. Others that are traveling, please pray for them. We have uh, a lot going on now. I know we uh, all the time, there's funerals that touch our church one way or the other. 
Pray for those who lost loved ones. It's not real easy. So uh, pray for them. God can comfort them as only he can. Now, I've said all of these things to lead up what I want to share with you this morning. <laughs> prayer. Just want to talk about prayer for a little bit this morning. Prayer is divine, uh, de uh, defined as a, a sincere desire of your heart. Now, we pray and we've been sharing with our young people. And they've been praying, learning to pray and wanting to share. I appreciate that. But I wonder how many of us as adults are not praying like we should. I, I shared with the uh, beginning of Sunday school, Miranda was going to share this morning, and she did a good job. I appreciate that. The reason she did was we normally have uh, one of the young people do it on the fifth Sunday. We had a very special deal that we were working with, and we asked her to uh, put it off. But I want to work with our youth. I want them to know they can stand, they can share, they can pray. If you notice, Miranda, before she closed, she prayed. That's what I want our young people to know, that prayer changes things. Prayer changes things in my life, it does in yours. So I want us to think about prayer this morning. I was in the study last night, it's been, <laughs> been sort of hectic. Any of you that is. <laughs> Me and my companion got married in August the 16th of 1966. We lived together and been in our home and spent all of those years together. <laughs> She's been gone for three days and it's been the quietest house. <laughs> <laughs> it has been quiet. I go in and I sit down. Uh, I, I sort of left uh, the TV off to just thought about it and it's so quiet so I slipped away to study. Spent some time last night and I got to think about it. How many of us are really seeking God's will for our life? I've been pastoring soon be 52 years. And in that 52 year, God's taught me a lot of things. Shane asked me yesterday, I was talking to her about a young preacher. I told her, I said, I'd love to see him go get some education. I said, not that he needs it to preach, not that he needs it to read and all of that. But I told her the school of hard knocks is hard. Dean's back here in Eddie there, but you know what I'm talking about. I wanted him to learn ways that it'd be easier on him as a young preacher to go, and I've been talking to him about it. But prayer is something we absolutely cannot do without. That's our lifeline with God. That's our prayer line. The most and the greatest power source that's not used is prayer. We're neglecting what God has given us to do. I just, in my mind, I was sitting there writing down some things. Couldn't help but to think, and I'm going to read out of the 19th chapter of 2 Kings in a moment, and I've got a reason for doing that. But in 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, and the 17th verse, Paul wrote to the Thessalonian people, and he said, Pray without ceasing. How much are we praying? How much time are we spending? And I, I started telling you a moment ago about what I heard this morning, and I thought about it, and I've been sharing with you. Without young people in the church, one generation away from a church discontinuing. Now this church has been functioning. I can prove that it's been functioning since 1834. And I'm almost sure it, it was almost 20 some year before, but I've not got all the proof, but I can say it was opened up in 1834, the old building that, the second building ago that was tore down was built somewhere shortly around 1834. And our church has been functioning a long time. 
I'd hate to think we're the generation that lets our church die. Without working with our young people, praying for them, setting an example that could happen. Our young people is our future church. They're very much a part of the day, but they're a future church. But they are looking to leaders that will pray, set a standard, live in a standard that will do it. So I'm going to talk to you on some of these objects, but number one today is prayer. So if Apostle Paul felt like that we should pray without ceasing, that don't mean that we have to stay on our knees. What did I say a prayer was? Sincere desire of the heart. What the heart wants. What God pulling the heart string to lean toward. So Paul's saying you meditate on it. You can think about it. You don't have to close your eyes to pray. We, with a prayerful attitude in the heart, can approach God for our young people, for our church, and for ourselves. Second Corinthians, the 13th chapter, 7th verse, he said, pray that you do not evil. There's ever been a time Christians or to be praying, God help us to stay away from the evil things of the world. Our world is involved in everything wicked and sinful that can be thought of. We live in the world. God didn't save us and take us out of the world. He left us in the world. And we should be praying, God help me to not to have my garments stained with the sins of the world. Help me to stay away from evil. Then in Romans 8, 26, we're to pray and always put prayer in that we put God first. Now, where's God at in your life? We live in the world. We're a part of the world. But God wanted us to come out and to be a separate people and to live in a different standard and he said, pray that you come out from among the world or pray to be a part of it. Now, in 2 Kings 19, I'm going to read Hezekiah's prayer. If, if you want to look in Luke 2, <laughs> that's where the disciples came to Christ and said, teach us how to pray. You and I quote it as the Lord's Prayer, but it's actually a prayer to remind us what our prayer should be shaped and molded after, not those words, but to, uh, uh, to do it. I may read it in a moment and talk to you a little bit, it, but in 2 Kings 19, starting with the 14th verse, and this is when the king of Assyria came up against Judah and Israel and was had sent a letter. They had destroyed every other little nation. And if you look what's happening in the Middle East, it's been going on since biblical times. Since the beginning, one little nation rises and tries to overrun the other and take it. That was what was happening. And Hezekiah just happened to be a religious person that knew God and reverenced God and when he received a letter that Syria was coming and going to take everything they had going to destroy them he chose to pray now if you look around you today the world is trying to steal our young people and doing a good job of it now, I want you to realize God's still in control. God's still on the throne. And God can still do what his people humble themselves and pray and ask him to do. So we, as God's people, 
need to be praying about our young people. Now, Hezekiah, I'm going to, when I read his prayer, I'm going to break it down a little bit. And I want us as adults, as leaders in the church, as a church, I want us to make our devotion and our prayer life the best it can be for Jesus Christ. So in the 14th verse of the 19th chapter, it reads like this. And said, Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messenger and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Where do we go when trouble comes? I'll read the rest of it in a minute. I, I just got to make some comments here. Not trying to add to the word of God, not trying to take away, but point some points out. Where are we going? Folks, I, maybe I'm old-fashioned. If I am, that's okay. Boy, this altar is the best place I ever found to pray. When the world overcomes, when I have burdens that are bothering me, you're going to find me here praying a lot of times. I want God to help me with it. Now, I know God hears me when I pray. I got a special place of prayer that I love to go and snail away and pray. But this is one of my favorite places. I like to... I like to remember some of the times and I just like to come and thank God for what he's done in the past. Make my petition known. I love to come to the house of God on Sunday morning. Come when we pray together. Come when we fellowship together. And come and share burdens with one another. And then before we leave to pray that God do something about it. Hezekiah had a problem. Do you have a problem? If you're being honest, you'll have to say yes. We all have problems. We all have things that bother us. And if you look around, he'll order to break our heart to shape and the way our country's going. Now God doesn't, boy, I didn't intend to get all this, but here it comes. God will not allow us to walk like we're walking and get by with it. Because God said to whom I love, and thank God he loves us. He said I'll rebuke and chasten. We're headed for trouble in America if we don't turn back to God. Churches, we're in trouble if we don't get down to business with God and begin to pray like we've never prayed before. So Hezekiah headed to the house of the Lord, or to the temple. Went in and on the altar, the place of prayer, the place that they could come together and pray, he laid the altar, spread it out on the altar, and began to pray about his problem. Boy, at church is time we begin to spread our letters out before God began to talk to him about the situation we're in from our young people when I look around and see what's happening around us it breaks my heart I love kids I love young adults I enjoy being with them but to see what Satan's are doing in their lives is enough to break my heart Folks, let me tell you something. Church, we need to wake up. We're losing that generation that could close the churches in Ashkenazi. We need to be serious about serving God. He walked in. He, he laid the letter out on the altar. Now listen to what he said. He said, And Hezekiah prayed, before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, not only is he God of Israel, he's the God of America too, if we'll let him be. 
He said, which dwelleth between the cherubims. He began to worship and something that we have sort of let up on. We are not really worshiping God like we should. <laughs> How long has it been since you praised the Lord for what he was doing in your life or your family's life? Sometimes I get excited and you may not understand it, but that's all right. When I see what God's doing in people's lives, how God can change lives, how he can turn them from what they was yesterday to a total different person today once they yield what to God. Shelby said yesterday, and I, I'll share this with you, and you'll understand more where I'm coming from. She said what had happened in Gary's life, <laughs> only God could have done. I'm glad God allowed me to be a part of it, but God had done things in his life. I look around and see what he does in some of your lives. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Almost like Sean's dad, and he's probably listening today over the internet. He, he was talking about when Sean stood to teach Sunday school for the first Sunday. It made his day. Much my day, too. Sean, I love you, son. When God changes these people, turns their life totally around, I get excited and want to worship God. If we're not going to worship him, we need to back up and look and see what's happening in our lives and praise him. He said he prayed. <laughs> Began to praise him as being the God that was high and exalted. <laughs> Ezekiel said to us, high and exalted above measure, said the glory of his trail filled the temple. When we begin to praise him, God feels things and changes things. He can change your life. He can change everybody around you's life when he does it. But he began to worship. And he said, thou art the God, even thou alone. He said, there's no other God but you. When we pray, how much honor are we giving to God with our prayer? For what he's doing, where, where he's taking us to. How he can change things. Even him alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Magnifying him as the God that did everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. God has brought me a long ways. And I praise him for it. I know he changes things around me. Sometimes he allows me to go through some things, but then God just changes the circumstance all around. I'm thankful he gives me grace to go through what he places. God's good, and we ought to praise him. He goes on further, and he said, Lord, bow down thine ear, or listen to us, Lord. i got something I need to talk to you about. I find myself there quite often. Now I've got a problem I don't have an answer for. I have something going on that I just don't have the answer for. God, you're going to have to help me with it. Guess what? God's always a present help in the time of need. I can magnify him. I can glorify him for that. He said, bow down thine ear and hear. Church, how long has it been since you told God what was really bothering you? Being honest with him. Little things, the big things. God, God's interested in your life. He's your personal savior. He's concerned about what's happening in your life. Have you talked to him about it? Prayer is the way we talk to him. Now through his word, the, through the Preaching of the gospel in different ways. God can speak back through the singing of the song. 
God can share with us things, but he gives us an opportunity to come and talk to him and make our petitions known. Aren't we doing it? Not only that, did he say, Thou bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And to hear the words of Senator Rim, which he has sent to him to reproach the living God. Now they can, in our country, they can defy God. And when we are a nation that's less than 50% playing any affiliation with the church, they can deny what God is, but God brought America a long ways. It was founded on his word. The Constitution of the United States was written based on the word of God. They can deny all that they want to, but I'm telling you, God's the one who blessed us and helped us to have what we have. So let's don't forget when we pray to magnify and praise God. He said, in the 17th verse, Senator of his letter and said, look at all the other nations that fell by the wayside and their gods thrown in the fire, their gods destroyed. And then here's Hezekiah's answer to this. He said, of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the works of men's hands, wood, stone, therefore they destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech, or I beg of you, earnestly, as Emily is out here, I can say, put it in as a conjunction for this, and she would not, I was right. Hezekiah said, Lord, I I'm begging of you, or I'm coming as humble as I know how to ask you to change this thing. He said, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand. And then he's going to say, because I'm going to praise you for what you do. <laughs> is my word of paraphrasing in it, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God even thou only. There's no other God that's going to stand up for you. The gods of this world is going to fold. The things that most people hold dear is going to pass away. Going to, will be left. The gods of gold and silver. <laughs> What you have, the land, the house, the cars, what little money you have in a, a bank account, when you close your eyes in death, it's going to stay right here. It's no God. Nothing, nothing that has any power in it. We may think it does, but about one second past death, we'll find out it was nothing. There was no gods to it. It wasn't worth anything. Work our fingers to the bone, spend all of our time trying to gain the wealth of this world and die and leave it behind for the kids to fight over. Don't that make sense? Now think about it. He said, all of these things said there's only one true living God. And that's the creator of heaven and earth. Now the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, but you understand what I'm saying. There's only one. Then he goes further and closes his prayer. Isaiah, the prophet of the day, is going to give him assurance God heard his prayer. <laughs> I don't need Isaiah to tell me God's going to answer prayer. I've seen him answer too many. God's too real, been too real in my life. I saw and changed too many things that were out of my control. He could just form it and shape it and put it any way he wanted to. So I've got a God that's able to do it. 
But God just chose to give Isaiah or Hezekiah assurance and he chose to use the prophet of God. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Now, that's, that's the supreme being that matters. The Lord God of Israel, that, that which thou hast prayed. <laughs> what do you pray? God hears it. He's going to say, he's going to tell him here in a minute. But I want you to know God hears your prayers. He said, that which thou hast prayed to me against Senator Rib, king of Assyria, I have heard. Now God hears your prayers. God knows what we need. <laughs> it used to be a, a, I think it was a country song, I don't remember now. Thank God for unanswered prayer. Sometimes we pray stupid stuff. And that, that's... <laughs> Maybe not the best term to put it, but it's true. Sometimes we pray for things we don't need. The Bible said God knows what you have need of. But there are things that you and I are praying for that God's hearing and God's going to do something about it. God's going to change that circumstance. And when he does, you're going to know it. it may not come like you think it will. But God's going to change the circumstance in some of his life. I can promise you that if you'll pray, he's going to change something. It may not be when, it may not be how you expected it, but God knows best and knows what we need. But have we asked him to do anything? I've been praying for sometimes uh, some things here in the church. I begin to see things begin to change and I just praise him for it. God, I can't do it. I'm just human. But God, I know you're supreme. You can do all things. So I'm just keep on praying. Leave it in God's hands. God can take care of it. Now, if he said pray without ceasing, that was Paul writing to the Thessalonian people, 5th chapter and 17th verse of 1 Thessalonians. Pray without ceasing. Don't quit praying. Stay close to God. Talk to God. He wants to hear your prayer. He is hearing your prayer. He wants to do something about it. But it may be a different timetable than what you and I. We're almost like the fellow that needed patience. He prayed. God gave me patience. I want him now. You know, sometimes God has to teach us patience. Lead us through our affliction to learn. But God's going to change some things. So pray, don't give up. Hmm. Thought just run through my mind. Several years ago, my mother spent a lot of time in prayer. <laughs> she raised four boys, so you know she spent a lot of time in prayer. Never no matter what I was into, no matter where it been, what I was doing, I never entered the house, but what my mom was still awake praying that God would bring us home. He did. I thank you. Two brothers living will tell you the same thing. The one that's gone home, she spent a lot of time pleading with God on his behalf. He had a drinking problem and just just was plain on mean, just probably like the rest of us. But she kept praying. I kept talking to him about the Lord. God had called me and I was pastoring. One Sunday morning, he walked through the doors of the church I was pastoring. I knew something was going on. Because he brought his family with him. And a lot of times on Sunday morning he wasn't with his family. But he had his family with him. At the end of the message. He walked down and he took his right with the Lord. I called my mom. I said he made things right. 
You should begin to praise God. Don't give up praying. God can change things. Now that he's gone, I miss him so much. But he gave his life to God and he lived for him. What is your prayer that you need to be praying about more? So pray without ceasing. Don't quit. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for our young folks. <laughs> we have good young people and I appreciate them so much. Let's pray for them. But last, when he was talking about the prayer, if you want to look in Luke, the 11th chapter, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm using all my time this morning, but you look at Luke, the 11th chapter. I want to share with you something. And as I turn there, I want to read this. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, how be thy name? Are we letting God have his way in our life? <laughs> it's easy to want to do it our way. Said, so, I will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for also we forgive everyone that indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, you think about those things. Are we forgiving those that mistreated us? Are we living the example, and are we praying, God lead us as a church, as individuals? Are we doing what God wants us to do? How long has it been since you spent some time in prayer? <laughs> I, I may have told you about it. I was speaking in a revival. A young lady, her, she was so burdened. And good young lady. Give the invitation. She made it down to the altar and began to pray. I didn't know what was going on, but I've never heard her praying in my life. She was weeping. Her heart was broke. I just stepped down to pray with her. She had praying over her Bible, and she explained a lot of it later to me. She had wept. She was crying and praying so hard that there was a puddle of tears on top of her Bible. I knelt and prayed with her, and she explained to me a little bit later after that. She said they just found my best friend's daughter, 17-year-old, that had committed suicide. She was brokenhearted for somebody else. <laughs> she was praying for her own kids, too, I found out later. But, and they've been saved since then, pray God. But she had a burden that she couldn't handle, and she took it to God. God changed things. <laughs> I can tell you more about the story. She sent me a clipping that was out of the news out of Florida. Young lady, 16-year-old, killed with lightning. They had a memorial service in the gymnasium. There was 200 young people come to meet Christ. She said, I was praying about that situation. She knew about it. She had spent some time in Florida. She knew a lot of the folks that was there. She sent me the copy and said, I want you to show you that God did hear my prayer. When I read it, 200 souls saved. I said, God, help us to spend more time on the altar praying than we ever have before. Because our nation's in trouble. Our young people's in trouble. They need Jesus. And we need to be concerned. I'm concerned to you. What is your prayer line? Let us stand head bowed, nice close. Okay. Okay, 
you have something you need to pray about, the altar's open. I don't share it with you. I like to come to this place and pray. Maybe it's something you need to pray about. You want to come? Others won't come. Just make your way down. We're going to pray. We're going to do something else in a minute, but maybe you want to just come and pray. Something you need to talk to God about. Need God to change. You want to find your way here. Maybe a burden that you're carrying for someone that you want to pray about. You just come on. We'll pray in just a moment. Whatever be the need in your life, you may have something. You may need somebody to pray with you, pray for you. You want to come, you come. Just let me know. Let some of these others that's on the altar pray. They'll pray with you. I guarantee you. Are there another need? My Lord, just a second. Now, we're going to pray. Father, I thank you for the day. I thank you, Father, for so much for being a part of our service. God, I thank you when I can feel your presence. God, how good it is. How sweet. But God, I realize there are folks on this altar this morning that's carrying burdens. Maybe their kids. Father, it may be friends. It may be just young people in general. God, I thank you for burdening our hearts enough. We want to pray. We want to seek your face, Father, that you can change things. God, as we pray, I want to agree touching with all of these. God, I don't know what their burdens is. They don't have to tell me. But, Father, you said as long as any two of us agree touching. God, I want to agree with them. I want our prayers to be together. Father, that you would change things. God, I want you to touch our young people. God, give us the victory. Oh, Father, help us that our generation would not be the last that we the people of Christ that would live and pray to God, God, change things. God, you know what we stand in need of. But God, we plead with you this morning to us. Don't let our young people die lost. Don't let them go on where they're at. Father, you have a way of bringing them down, getting their attention. God, I pray that you would do it. Father, don't let them tramp too far. Oh, God, help them to see the right way back. Father, the prodigal son look back to the father's house. God, those that maybe are cold toward you look in the wrong direction. Help them to look back home, Father, to the home place, which is Jesus Christ and his love. Father, now I pray that you could just touch. Again, we touch these that are free. Hear and answer prayers. Father, we'll praise you. We'll be careful to give you honor, give you praise for that you do. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hey. <laughs> want to do one thing this morning. Nancy reminded me I was going to do it anyway, but she reminded me. I appreciate that, Nancy. want to recognize the veterans this morning. Yesterday was Veterans Day. This is Veterans Weekend. And I don't know of a better way of doing this. I want them to come and stand up here this morning. If you're able, come on, stand up here, Bill. You, you make it, and y'all come. Kenny, Tim, Leroy, all of you that uh, other veterans or, that I didn't mention. Roger's not able to be here. I knew there's somebody else I was missing. Amen. 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 All right, these fellows stand. I think it, I'm paying honor and tribute to them. Make sure you check in with our visitors. Make sure they're made welcome. They're welcome to come do this too. But let's uh, let's just check in and tell them we appreciate what they did. We know that we had some that give all, which that their life. These fellow serves, so let's let's shake hands with them this morning. Come fellowship together. You don't need no music for this.
Right. <laughs>